Mr. Soto. In the uh, state legislature, seniority and experience can equal influence. Why should New London Democrats replace a legislator with seniority and experience with a freshman who would uh, have to learn the ropes? You addressed some of this before, but maybe we can elaborate. Sure. So I think there's like this fallacy out there that I don't have relationships in Hartford. Um, some of them are in this room tonight, and I thank them for coming down. And so, you know, let's kind of clear that up for a second because I'm not going in there, you know, with, you know, no experience and relationships in Hartford. And Representative Hewitt has seen me up in Hartford working on the Latino Affairs Commission, working with state legislators. Um, so that's number one. Um, number two, again, you know, Ernie Hewitt has been a great representative, you know, in those first six years. Um, and now we're kind of seeing the effects of what and kind of why we might need term limits, right? Um, you know, I strongly believe in term limits, you know, and if I'm in, if I'm up there for 12 years and I'm not productive, please someone, you know, vote me out. But, you know, the reality is, is that after 12 years, we've seen um, the leadership go from his one position and then that being stripped away. Well, uh, you want to open up that door, Chris? Let's do it. Okay. Let's do it. Well, let's open up this door right here. Tell me why that um, you are in a Democratic primary. You call yourself a Democrat. You're running against a Democrat. But you're writing checks to another legislator, Republican legislator, that's trying to upseat one of the most senior Democrats in Hartford. That doesn't make sense to me. Number two, why are you receiving checks from a Republican right here in this district, right across the bridge? receiving checks from him for your campaign. Number three, you were appointed to LPRAC. He was, and I've seen him around the Capitol. But you were appointed by the highest ranking Republican in the state of Connecticut. Why, Chris? What do they want from you? Could, could you uh, please, no applause. Let's be respectful. Uh, could you, uh, before we give uh, Mr. So a chance to respond, could you, what candidate we're talking about that... Uh... Of course. You, were, you, were, you wrote checks to Emanuela Palmeiras. Emanuela. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, I'm not Hispanic, but uh, I'm working on it. Uh, and you wrote checks to her campaign. I don't write checks to Republican campaigns because they want something from you. They almost, they, they, they think they're this close to taking over control in Hartford, so they'll do anything to get me out of there because I'm the senior member of the, of the Democrats in southeastern Connecticut, and they want me gone, okay? Uh, there's a reason why Groton lost so much money in ECS funding. There's a reason why Waterford lost so much money. Right. It's because they have one thing in common. They have rookie legislators in Hartford. All right, thank you. Uh, let's give Mr. Soto a minute, uh, since we had a new issue raised. Uh, if you can go ahead, Mr. Soto, on this uh, funding of a Republican candidate, if you could comment. I'm so glad that he brought up Emanuela because what he didn't tell you was that Emanuela was instrumental in being on the English language learner task force that is helping New London students, right? New London has, if not, if not the highest, the second highest English language learner population in the state of Connecticut. And she's been instrumental and making sure that there are, there's more money for our students here in New London and making sure that the right safeguards are in place for those students. So that's Emanuela. Number two, John Scott. Yes, John Scott is a friend, just like Emanuela. And John Scott is also helping New London students. He serves on the Board of Directors of Higher Edge. And I thank him for his service because, because of him and because of our Board of Directors, and many of you are on Board of Directors, more kids in New London are going to college. Please, again, if we could withhold the applause. We're just cutting into the time of our candidates. Thank you. Uh, yeah, you have uh, uh, 30 seconds to respond, Representative. You, you're right. You're 100% right. And my wife is French. She tells me family bush all the time. <laughs> so I understand the English language versus another language thing. But in Hartford, in Hartford, Connecticut, John Scott, this friend of yours, has voted against every minimum wage package that we ever tried to introduce up there. They, what they do is they get all this beautiful stuff they want in the budget, and then they vote against it. You have to take a stand. There is no gray area in Hartford, Chris. 
You got to move or you got to vote for something. I've seen people. Thank you. <laughs> Time was up. Thank you. Uh, the next question uh, goes to Representative Hewitt.